Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Good afternoon, and welcome to Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Ethan Allen. Joining me today via Skype is uh, Dr. James A. Smith, uh, the Henry L. Kinnear Professor of Environmental Engineering at the University of Virginia. Welcome, Jim. Thank you, Ethan. I appreciate you having me. Uh, nice to have you back here. Uh, uh, Jim is joining us via Zoom uh, from, from Virginia, actually. And uh, we've had Jim on before about, what, two years ago? He came on when he was just developing a really fascinating product called the Matty Drop. And uh, this grew out of his research that he uh, has been doing for years. Jim has studied uh, fluid flow and solute transport and, and microbial transport and porous media. He used to do, I guess, uh, ceramic filters for water, right? He used to work. That's with, correct, yeah. Right, and, and then some years ago came up with this interesting idea of rather than trying to push the water through the filter, realized that, that there, there was a sort of a better way to do it, right? Exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, we're, um, you know, and, and just sort of backing up a little bit, of course, what we're, we're really trying to solve an issue that's, that's a global problem. You know, I mean, you know, probably, you know, in, in, at least here in the United States, in most of the United States, we have great water. We have great water treatment plants that are centralized and purify the water, send it out through complicated distribution networks. Uh, and it's on 24-7. It's got a chlorine residual to prevent any pathogen growth. Um, and it's highly regulated. Um, but, uh, you know, if you flip up um, uh, picture number one, um, in most of the world, um, this is sort of what people are dealing with. And this is a picture I snapped myself in a rural part of South Africa. Um, and uh, we had just installed a borehole, uh, and uh, within about an hour after we had it operational, uh, this woman showed up uh, with water storage containers and a wheelbarrow. And she fills up these containers and brings them back to her house because they don't have a regular supply of water. There's no taps coming into their home. Uh, it, uh, water, even when they have a standpipe nearby, it may be intermittent. So what they do is they store their water in their in their home, uh, and even if the water starts out clean, which it may not be, it may be untreated water. But even if it starts out clean, when it sits around for a long period of time, when kids are dipping their cups in storage containers and their hands are, are touching the water, um, it becomes contaminated over time. So the, the the World Health Organization has said probably the best way to deal with this problem that the resources aren't there to build great water treatment plants and distribution systems, but if people can treat their water in their home right before they consume it, that's a way that we can potentially get some help uh, for for people in these developing world settings, um, and that's sort of what our our goal of our Madi Drop technology is. It's a a point of use water treatment technology. Um, you know, if you take a look at um, slide number two, um, basically uh, what the Madi Drop is, it's just a ceramic tablet. Um, so it's made from clay, natural material, and we assemble the clay in a specific way and fire it in a kiln at a high temperature. And we also apply silver in a very specific way. Uh, and we end up getting this ceramic tablet. And what you do is you just put this in a 10 to 20 liter water storage container, and you fill that container up at night, and the next morning the water is safe to drink. And basically the Madi Drop releases ionic silver into the water at a very controlled wet rate. And silver is a remarkable uh, antimicrobial uh, pa uh, antimicrobial agent or disinfectant for waterborne pathogens. It, it disinfects a broad spectrum of pathogens. And if you know, if you look at uh, the third picture, um, basically once um, someone is using the Madi Drop, all they need to do is just keep refilling their water storage container every day, every night. They fill it back up and the water is safe to drink the next day, and it works the same way day after day. And then they can, the next day, they can just 
uh, open the spigot and collect their water for drinking water. And it works and it provides them with safe uh, drinking water uh, that doesn't change the taste. It doesn't change the odor of the water. Um, it still tastes the same, and yet those anti, those microbial pathogens, you know, E. coli, Shigella, Cryptosporidium, rotavirus, adenovirus, they're all disinfected, so you're not going to get sick from those microbial pathogens. Yeah, this is, it's a really beautiful technology, and so, so very appropriate to the, uh, to the uses in uh, places, well, like you were saying there, in rural, rural South Africa. I was doing work several years ago out in the, some of the more remote islands out in the South Pacific and ran into the same kind of situations where people, a lot of people were gathering rainwater off their catchment systems to uh, uh, use as their sole source of drinking water. Even in places where they have a centralized system, like in Majuro, that, that centralized water system is pressurized and running only for a few hours per week, really, uh, a few hours per day, two or three days per week. And particularly because it's not pressurized much of the time and people have illegally tapped into it, uh, what you get out of that tap, you don't want to drink anyhow because it, it's, not, it's not safe, basically. The whole system has basically been contaminated. So I saw the Maddie Drops as being a tremendously valuable uh, uh, option there, a, a tool for people to use. and. Uh, even better, and Jim didn't mention this, but many drops cost five dollars a piece, basically, right? And they'll last for a year. Yeah. So, um, we, you know, we've been continuing to evolve the Madi Drop design, um, and basically, um, the original Madi Drop would treat about um, uh, ten liters of water per day, and would last for six months. Um, we just are about to introduce the Madi Drop Plus. Um, and uh, in fact, we actually just shipped out our first order of a thousand Mahdi Drop Pluses today. Um, the Mahdi Drop Plus will treat 20 liters of water per day for 12 months. So basically, it's quadrupling the performance of the original Mahdi Drop. Um, the pricing it's it's variable. You know, if you just want to go to our website and buy one Mahdi Drop, it's it's a fifteen dollars. But if you're interested in buying uh, in bulk in large quantities. Uh, we, we can sell the Mahdi Drop down at around $6 per Mahdi Drop. Um, and basically, the, when, you, when you do the math, 20 liters a day for a year, one Mahdi Drop treats over 7,000 liters of water. Wow. So uh, really, that makes it the least expensive water treatment technology available today. There's nothing that's cheaper. Even chlorine drops uh, are more expensive than the Mahdi Drop. Yeah, and the, the beauty of it too is that basically once you set it in your in your uh, carboy or, or your dispenser, your water dispenser, you can basically forget about it. Then uh, you're saying now for a year, not not even just six months. I mean, you don't have to do anything else. Uh, so it's not like you've got to be putting in yeah. like with chlorine every day, basically. But you just you just leave this in place and keep top, topping off your water container. Yeah, Ethan, and that's a great point. So. You know, in my experience, I've been working now in, in, in Mexico, Guatemala, and South Africa for the last 12 years or so. And um, what, um, you know, I think, you know, when you think about a point of use water treatment technology, um, it's actually got very difficult design criteria. Um, first, it's got to, of course, be technologically effective, right? It's got to kill, the, kill or remove the pathogens. Mm -hmm. um, it's got to, though, be really cheap. And the Mahdi Drop certainly is the cheapest. Um, it's got to be um, really easy to use, um, and that I think is again a, a remarkable advantage of the Mahdi Drop. Is as you say, once you put it in your water container that first time, you don't do anything different. All you just got to do is fill up your water container every night, and then the next morning it's safe to drink. And of course, it's got to be socially acceptable, um, and and that can be tricky too, right? If, if it's if it changes the taste or the odor or the color of the water, um, that's going to be a big problem. You know, chlorine, uh, which, you know, the centers, the centers for Disease Control in Atlanta for a long time have really been pushing their safe water system, which is basically a little bottle of concentrated chlorine solution, and you add the chlorine each day to your water. Well, they've had detailed studies of that in, in developing nations, and what they find is they go into a community and they, they distribute everybody, they give them all safe water storage containers, they give them free chlorine bottles, 
They instruct them on the importance of health and hygiene and why they need the chlorine. And then they come back a year later, and only about 20% of the water containers have any chlorine in them. So, you know, 80% just stop using it. Oh. Um, and why, you know, it's, it's the, the inconvenience, right? You got to do it every single day. Um, it's the, the change in taste. Um, so, you know, I think technologically effective is, of course, important, but maybe more important and more challenging is that, that social acceptability and getting people to be willing and interested and, and continue to use the product. And I think that's, again, the Mighty Drop is arguably the number one uh, product in that regard in terms of ease of use and, and social acceptance. Absolutely. And I mean, I saw, again, I saw a similar thing uh, in Yap. Uh, Yap actually has three uh, municipal water systems that cover basically all of Yap proper and really actually deliver good, high quality drinking water to something like 95% of the homes in Yap. Uh, and they, they get their water from fairly deep wells. They treat it very effectively. They, their EPA actually looks at it very carefully. And people don't like it. People that won't drink it. Literally, people will still go and collect their rainwater and drink their, sometimes their untreated rainwater, rather than drinking this, this treated water because they don't like the taste of the chlorine. Uh, and it, it was really a, a stunning thing for me to run into when I was trying to get people to, to, uh, to sort of have better habits with their drinking water. I, I was stunned to run into this, that, that they had this access to the perfectly healthy water but wouldn't use it. But, and so again, the Maddy Drop came out on as, as a perfect thing for people there. Because yes, yeah, so then they could use it with their rainwater that they, that they got. They didn't have to boil the rainwater to treat it. They could uh, just collect it as they've always done and didn't add any taste to it. And so they were, they were very happy with it, you know? It yeah, it's, it's remarkable. It's, you know, I think people just don't, they sort of know about water and water quality, but they don't know. And when something, even as little as the taste of the water changes, they'd rather not use that, that technology uh, and just take their chances with the, with the untreated water. Because they, you know, to some extent, they say, well, I, I, it's probably not safe, but I've been drinking it all my life. Everybody drinks it. You know, it's right. not a big deal. Um, and, and that's a, a tough thing to overcome. Yeah. Um, but, you know, what, what's, what's neat about the Mahdi Drop, you know, I, I feel it's a very disruptive technology because there's really nothing like it. Um, you know, if you think about what's on the current point of use water treatment market, there's the traditional technologies, you know, things like boiling and maybe um, things like uh, Moringa oleifera that's added ground up seeds of the Moringa tree that are added to water. Um, and of course, those are free, but they're actually relatively ineffective or they're expensive. You know, boiling is actually remarkably expensive. Sure. The, the cost of labor to gather firewood, the cost, the health problems with breathing in particulates from indoor fires. Um, and then there's a group that's like the one-time use, and that might be things like Procter & Gamble's Pure Sachets or Aquatabs. Uh, and they're very expensive. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Aquatabs to treat uh, 7,000 liters of water uh, cost about $15, right? So it's, it's you know, triple the cost of, of a Mahdi Drop. Mm -hmm. um, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, $50. It's, you know, 10 times the cost of a Mahdi Drop. Um, and then you get the high-end units. Now, those are great, and they work really well. You know, I'm talking about more complex filtration systems. It might have activated carbon. It may have ceramic candle filters. Um, the problem with that is they're just they're inaccessible to the global poor. They're just too expensive. Those units are often fifty, a hundred, a hundred and fifty dollars, yeah. and then you have to buy replacement filters. So that's just sort of out of reach of of the people we're trying to help. Exactly. Um, so the Mahdi Drop, the, the Mahdi Drop doesn't fit in any of those classifications, <laughs> right? It, it, it's not a one-time point of one-time use product, right? It, you know, one Mahdi Drop works for 12 months, um, and it, it doesn't involve. It's not expensive like a filtration unit, and it's not ineffective like many of the traditional methods. So I think in that regard, there's really nothing like it uh, uh, currently on the market. Absolutely. And, and we're going to explore it, uh, uh, some more of its advantages when we come back. Right now, we're going to take a one-minute break. Uh, you're uh, listening to, to Dr. Jim Smith uh, and me, your host, Ethan Allen, here on Think Tech Hawaii on Likeable Science. We'll be back in one minute. Do you want to be cool like me? 
If so, watch my show on Tuesdays at 1 called Out of the Comfort Zone. I sang this song to you because I think you either are cool or have the potential to be seriously cool. And I want you to come watch my show where I bring in experts who talk all about easy strategies to be healthier, happier, build better relationships, and make your life a success. So come sit with the cool kids at Out of the Comfort Zone on Tuesdays at 1. See you there. Hello, I'm Cynthia Lee Sinclair. I have a show called Finding Respect in the Chaos. It's all about women's rights and gender equality. It's a place for survivors of abuse to come on and tell their stories, and a place for advocates to come on and share important resources so that people can get past the abuse and into the hope and healing that's on the other side. I hope you'll join me every other Friday at 3 o'clock for Finding Respect in the Chaos. I'm Cynthia Lee Sinclair on thinktechhawaii.com. And you're back here on Likeable Science. I'm your host, Ethan Allen. With me today, uh, joining us in uh, via uh, Zoom meeting uh, in the Think Tech studios is Dr. James Smith from the University of Virginia, the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. Uh, and we've been talking about Maddie Drops. Uh, these are a silver-infused porous ceramic tablet that make a, a beautiful point-of-use uh, decontaminant water decontamination system. And we were talking earlier about, about how they sort of what they were made of and why they, they had su they've enjoyed such popularity, why why they're really a very appropriate technology for so many uses. But it, what's really amazing is is in some sense the chemistry of them. I, I uh, actually introduced them as part of my uh, Water for Life pro program out in the Pacific Islands here. Uh, and was amazed at sort of the ed educational potential because they use silver. And uh, Jim, maybe you can tell us a little more about how that silver is, is put into the Maddie Drops and, and what you had to do to sort of get the recipe just right, as it were. Yeah, and, and certainly we, we continue to improve it. But basically, the idea behind the Maddie Drop technology is we apply, uh, we basically, by applying silver to the ceramics the porous ceramic substrate, <clears throat> we can create what we call silver nano patches uh, throughout this porous ceramic tablet. Um, and uh, basically, um, these silver nano patches, if you put up um, the fourth picture, um, we've actually characterized them. We've gone in and looked with a transmission electron microscope, and we can see the patches of metallic silver, it's little solid silver. Uh, patches on the ceramic surface, and we can go around and, and basically measure the diameter of each patch, um, and then we confirm it's silver with something called energy dispersive spectroscopy. But by measuring each of the individual patches, we can actually um, get um, a histogram of the, the size of the nano patches. So um, the, the, the picture that's up on the screen shows that we see sort of a range of diameters, but typically a mean of around uh, three and a half to four nanometers. So what happens now when you put the Mahdi drop in the water, um, oxygen in the water reacts at the, the, the water-silver interface and oxidizes some of this zero-valent metallic silver and produces silver ions that then diffuse through a tortuous path out of the ceramic tablet and into the bulk solution. And then those silver ions are what then go ahead and disinfect the microbial pathogens. Um, and of course, we've designed it. Uh, we're targeting this typical water storage container. So we target it so we produce enough silver in the water to disinfect the pathogens, but we're well below the EPA and World Health Organization drinking water standards for silver. Um, silver is actually really non-toxic. Um, uh, you know, uh, the only known condition is Argeria, where if you drink double the drinking water standard for 70 years for all your water, you start to get some skin discoloration. Other than that, there are no known uh, toxic effects of silver, but of course, we even still, we keep it well below the drinking water standard with our design. And that's plenty enough silver to effectively dis disinfect the waterborne pathogens. Um, and basically, if you go to the fifth picture, you know, this just sort of shows sort of our evolution of our design over many years now. You know, we started out with sort of a red art clay that we use, this big, hunky cylinder. Um, for a while, we were looking at 
smaller cubes that would increase the surface area and increase the rate of release of the silver. Um, and then uh, we moved to sort of a soap bar uh, size tablet. And what we found was people were still having a little trouble in, in some of their water storage containers. It was still too wide to fit in. Uh, so we moved to a, a, even a more slimmer design. And we recently have improved our application of silver. Uh, so that's why we now have the 12-month lifespan and we're able to treat 20 liters of water per day. Um, so we've gone through a lot of design modifications. Uh, you know, we published a lot of our work um, in the scientific literature. Uh, but in the end, we've ended up with this. I guess the next picture is number six, um, the current product, uh, which is our 12-month Mighty Drop Plus. Uh, we wanted, we felt it was such a big advance, the change from 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 20, 10 to 20 and six to 12 months, that we wanted to even give it a new name. So we call it the Mighty Drop Plus. Super. Yeah. No, that, that's really wonderful that that uh, you you did that, and it's a great lesson too for people who develop technologies that, that it's not, you don't just hit on something and go with it. You, you have to keep pushing it and tweaking it to, to make it uh, really work the way you want. And again, the way, the way it works is actually very intriguing. It's still really, I gather, a matter of some, uh, some debate in the scientific community. Why, why is it that they, they sort of know there's several routes that silver is interfering with microbes in their uh, in their cell membranes and in their nuclear processes and, and various things, but uh, it's very intriguing to people that, that silver is so very toxic to microbes and yet, as you say, so sort of completely non-toxic to, uh, to us. Yeah, at the higher level uh, animals like us, it, yeah. it's really not a problem. Um, and uh, yeah, and it's, you know, it's what, what we're, we're continuing to do research on different pathogens. Um, we, uh, we, we just have my, my, one of my PhD students just finished, and she's <clears throat> getting ready to submit a paper on some work with adenovirus. Um, and no one has ever looked at silver effects on adenovirus. And we're, for the first time, we're showing a pretty good disinfection effect of silver on adenovirus. So a very common waterborne pathogen, um, and it actually looks like that the Mahdi drop in silver works well. Um, we've also done recent work with Cryptosporidia and Giardia. These are now Crypto and Giardia, you know, chlorine just doesn't work at all on them. So we're finding that the Mahdi drop does result in about a 10 to 15 fold reduction in Giardia and Crypto concentrations. So that was really exciting for us. It actually works better than chlorine. Um, and um, the other thing that's really interesting, we are actually now, we have data showing that um, the Mahdi drop when placed in a water storage container, will kill mosquito larvae. So oftentimes in household water in warm environments, mosquitoes will lay their eggs in water storage containers. Uh -huh. uh, so we actually tested it against the Zika mosquito, uh, Aedes aegypti, and the malaria mosquito, uh, Anopheles. And in both cases, we saw a 100% die-off of the mosquito larva over a 24-hour period. So this could be another tool in the battle against, you know, mosquito-borne diseases like malaria and the Zika virus. Wow, that's 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 amazing because yeah, malaria is still a huge killer out there, and uh, Zika is a concern. I wonder, uh, a little little local concern here is the uh, uh, so-called rat lungworm and uh, the uh, eggs and uh, larva of that little little thing. Uh, I wonder, I wonder if the Maddie drop works uh, against them. That would be, be interesting to find out. Uh, yeah, we, we haven't tested it against that. I'm not, I wasn't aware of that problem, but, I, you know, I, you know, there's a decent chance it will because uh -huh. those yeah. lower order organisms, it seems to work really well on, yeah. uh, which is great. Yeah. Um, the, other, the other thing, Ethan, we, we, I, I wanted to mention, too, we, we currently are, have a, a pretty significant um, study going on in Limpopo province, South Africa. We actually have 400 families involved in the study, um, and we've divided them into four groups. One group is control. We don't give any intervention to that group. One group is has a safe water storage container, basically a plastic container with a spigot and a cover. One group has the storage container with a Mahdi drop, and the last group has a storage container with a, a pot-shaped ceramic water filter. Um, and uh, we, we basically measure the water quality going into those interventions, 
and then we look at the water quality coming out. And if you look at the, the I think it's figure, uh, the fifth figure, uh, it's the, the uh, box and whisker plot one. Yeah, yeah. The uh, maybe it's the seven, I'm sorry, it's the seventh, the seventh one. Right. Um, and uh, the, um, this, the two graphs, the top graph, these are box and whisker plots that show the range of coliform bacteria in the water. And the top graph is all the untreated water for each intervention. And the bottom graph is the treated water. Um, now, if you look at uh, group D, uh, the top graph and the bottom graph are the same because that's the control group, right? So they're not getting any treatment. Right. Um, group C is the um, just the safe storage container. And as you can see, it's maybe helping a little bit, but not any measurable amount. Huh? Group B is the Mahdi drop. Wow. So if you look at the top graph for group B, there's loads of coliform bacteria. Uh -huh. You look at the bottom group, the treated water with the Mahdi drop, everything was zero. Oh. Um, and then group A is the ceramic filter, which also works well, but actually doesn't work as well as the Mahdi drop. Right. Um, so we're very excited about these results that the Mahdi drop in a large controlled field study, randomized controlled field study is performing so well with real users and real natural water conditions. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's very impressive to, to see and that, that's so wonderful to hear because I, I think you've really got a, a truly an appropriate technology for a lot of the, the areas in the world where drinking water is an issue. We're so spoiled here in the U.S. that we, virtually everyone in the U.S., as you say, has access to great water Virtually everyone just will turn on a tap anywhere they and you know fill up a glass and drink from it without without giving it a second thought But in so many places, that's not true uh, So much of the world that, that just simply is not not the not the case and they can't you can you don't want to do that so um, Anyhow uh, before we go out. I, I have just one completely off-the-wall question for you Jim uh, utterly, utterly sure. ha Has nothing to do with 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 Maddie drops if you could have the superpower of either flying or being invisible, which would you choose and why? <laughs> um, boy, I don't know. That's a tough one. I think invisibility might be sort of cool. Uh, because, you know, if you just want to get out of the way and get, have people not see where you're going, that's a good way to do it. Cool. Excellent. I just, just uh, have fun with that question. Anyhow, thank you so much for being here, Jim. I really have, have learned a lot. It's great to hear the, of Maddie Drops moving along and having developed so, so much over the last several years. I look forward to seeing you later on this summer, too, when you're going to be out here. And um, I hope you, our viewing audience, will come join us again next week for another episode of Likeable Science. I'm your host, Ethan Allen, signing off till then.